I'm like, yeah, it's call me eons. When the snare kick in, the beat is neon. Lights, yeah, I'm feeling What's up, amigos? It's the Prodigy Maker Minute with Chris Lewitt. As you may know, I'm the former number one for Cornell University, pro circuit player, elite junior development coach, and author and educator, author of The Secrets of Spanish Tennis and the Tennis Technique Bible. While I've been coaching every day on the court, the academy here in Manchester, Vermont is blowing up. And recently I was working on the serve strategy with some different students of mine and had one particular boy, we were talking about some good stuff with basic serve strategy, important serve uh, priorities in terms of tactics. So I thought I'd just share those with some of you uh, or share some of those with you. And the first one is simply when you're serving, do you have, uh, you know, what are your basic strategies? Do you have a strategy? A lot of young kids who I work with, they're just trying to get the serve in, which I think is very rudimentary. Obviously, that is the most essential strategy. You have to get the serve in, but that's not enough. You have to try to move the ball around the box. So the first idea is, where do I aim my serve? You know, and so the first suggestion that I usually make to kids is try to use angles try to open the court. In Spain, they call that the abierto or the angulado. So you wanna serve using the angles or opening the court. Uh, usually the angle serve is even wider than the abierto in Spain, at least according to the method of Tonin Law. But basic idea is, is abierto, open, open the space, open the court, create space with your serve. So I think that's one of the most fundamental serve strategies that is not very well known. It sounds so obvious, but I've talked with numerous, numerous kids and they just look at me like, wow, I've never really made that a priority before. I never really thought about it that way. Just try to create space, try to open up space. So when you work off of that strategy, you start to see a differentiation between the deuce court and the ad court. When you're serving in the deuce, the slice serve, if you're a right-handed player, becomes really high priority. And therefore that leads to sort of some technical ramifications because you have to have a good slice. You have to create a good bend with the ball and really make the ball skid out wide. That becomes part of the abierto serve or the angulado serve. And so the fundamental tactical approach affects the technical development. The player needs to develop that serve. A lot of juniors, especially young ones don't have a good slicer. Sometimes even older teenagers don't have a good slicer, a really good slicer that bends. So on the deuce, you need that to try to create space. On the ad court, contrarily, you use generally your kick serve. Your kick serve becomes the predominant serve, becomes a priority because the kick serve allows you to open up space and to move your opponent off the court more on the ad side. So different on the deucey than the addy, different strategies. It's not just the same. You know, when I was a kid, I just thought about my serve strategy, like a big chunk, like my, like a whole strategy. All right, this match, I'm going to do this strategy or, or that strategy. And, and what I'm saying is one of the most important things you can do is try to break up the strategies into a do strategy and an add strategy. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, I think that's, that's where the genius is. That's like the nugget, the golden nugget. That's the, the pearl. Is, is you have strategy for the deuce, strategy for the add, and the most important fundamental, aside from getting the ball in, is, is trying to create space, trying to open space. And there's more, like there's more important tactical fundamentals. So we were, I was on court talking about this and we were sort of layering a cake here, layering different strategies. And the next one would probably be to mix up your serves, to try to serve like a pitcher, when I was a kid, I always remember that analogy. I probably read that analogy or that metaphor in like an old tennis magazine article. And I think that's still great wisdom. You know, try to serve like a pitcher. Try not to throw the same pitches every time. Try to use the slice, use the kick, use the flat power serve, throw in different speeds, throw in different spins, throw in different heights. And if you try to serve like that, you're probably going to have a more effective delivery. You're going to get more short balls. You're going to get more mistakes or errors from your opponent. You're going to have an easier time holding. So for me, that would be another very important strategy to teach 
this could be for a beginner or a young tournament player, but also for high school age tournament players, even high level players. Sometimes even high level players don't have great serve strategies. You know, they just kind of step up there and, and, and whatever they serve according to whimsy, like according to whatever whim um, comes to them, that's what they're, whatever urge they have, they're just going to like impulsively serve. And I think that that is, that's an issue. You know, that's not, that's not a good thing to serve whimsically, just based on your predilection at the time, whatever comes to mind, like spontaneously. So opening space, using variety, mixing up your serves. Part of using variety is not serving to the same spot again and again. I play with a lot of my students and even some of the higher level kids, even national level kids, sometimes they serve the same way over and over. Like the same serve. I, I stop the match or I stop the set or the point play. I say, hey, you know, the last two or three games, you served every first serve the same on both boxes, add and deuce. And I'm just waiting for it. And they're like, huh, I never, never noticed. You know, um, another very important strategy is to try to serve to your opponent's weaker side. And some players actually have, they might have a strong forehand, but on the return, they might not re they might have a better backhand return. Like some sometimes with a good double-handed backhand, the player is actually a little bit better on the return with that wing than on the than when they start getting into the baseline rally. So trying to serve, especially on important points, to your opponent opponent's weak side, and not going not just using your serve whatever your your best serve is. Your best serve maybe a slice wide, but if the guy has an amazing forehand, you might need to adjust that strategy, even though. You do want to go wide and open space. You might have to use that a little more judiciously if, for example, the opponent's return is amazing with the forehand, for example, or on the ad side, same thing. You might have a great kicker wide. You might have a great power serve wide. But if your opponent has like a laser two-handed back and return, like the return's just money, you may have to adjust that. And maybe serve a little more body, serve a little more up the middle, to the weaker side, even though fundamentally you do want to try to create space more and more. I think that's such an important fundamental strategy. Serving middle brings your opponent in to a into good court position. So you're, you're actually helping your opponent achieve good court position at the onset of the rally, at the onset, at the beginning of the point. I just think that is generally a bad thing. You would like to have dominance in terms of court position. It reminds me of jiu-jitsu. I do a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you always try to achieve position before submission. And uh, that's a common saying in, in jiu-jitsu. I love my Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So you, you don't just go for the submission. You don't just go for the choke or the attack. You try to get your opponent in a bad position first. You, you, you achieve dominance in terms of position or positional dominance. And then that opens up your submission. Then you can submit your opponent with, with an attack or finishing move. And it's the same in tennis. You want to use that serve to achieve better position. You want your position to be better than the opponent's position. And then you can go for the submission, whether that's a volley or a big forehand or an approach shot or whatever. So, you know, love my jujitsu, guys. Got to make the jujitsu analogy, ana analogies when I can for you martial arts fans out there. What other fundamental strategies are there? Like, like basic building block strategies. Second serve. The second serve should be typically a kick serve. So the, again, the strategies that you want to use, they have ramifications for what you're working on technically. A lot of kids don't have a kick serve. A lot of even good players don't have a kick serve. So a kick serve is your topspin serve that's safer, bounces high, has good movement, and that should be the standard second serve at at high level at tournament at high level tournament play and a lot of kids have just like a flatter second serve or they just slice it in and like that's not really what high level players do except with some there are some exceptions for female players who are maybe not strong enough in their shoulder to generate a good kick sometimes they will slice the second serve or hit the second serve a bit lower so those are like some general principles First serve is slice or power serve. Second serve should be a nice kicker. Um, you want to mix up variety. You want to open spaces. You know, you don't want to just 
you don't you don't want to you want to have a target you don't want to just serve down the middle you don't you don't just want to get it in that's a very basic one i guess that's a basic strategy but um you know you you want to uh serve to your opponent's weakness you know these, these are like some just like basic building block serve strategies that a lot of kids like i don't even know if they even think about that you know so thought i'd share those with you guys i have some more serve strategies i'd be happy to share with you but this is the project maker minute it's not the big one the big show so i guess we'll we'll just wrap it up there and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about essential serve strategies in another program if you enjoyed this project maker minute please consider checking out my big show the project maker show i promise we got new new episodes coming i've been working like an animal on the court coaching every day top juniors lower level tournament players, even some young kids who are just starting out, even some adults who are serious adults, like trying to play tournaments adults or really trying to improve like in a, uh, something technical. So got a lot of people coming through the doors at CLTA. So I'm on the court all the time. Haven't had as much time to make videos and podcasts, but you know, I'll be there with you very soon. Guys, I will see you on the next program. Yeah, I'm feeling myself. Are you feeling yourself? Pants, nobody comes close. Too hot to the brick.